Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are looking at the Fushin class picket ships and I'm sure I'm kind of butchering the name up here again as usual. Uh, these are small gunships used by the Shiviri Imperium. Uh, another name I'm going to butcher and the more I say it the worse it's probably going to get. Okay so although these vessels main role was to disable enemy vessels and guard the uh, Guard the fleets. I'm just going to skip the name. I'm sorry. Um, their delicate frameworks and inefficient shields resulted in them frequently being used in suicide missions. Um, it's an interesting ship design that we get here. More or less a kind of ball design. Um, all right. So characteristics. Each, each of these ships uh, were crewed by 13... Hawaiks and six uh, entetched servant droids, although the ships could be remotely piloted um, by the Siruk C- cruisers. And, yeah. Um, as some of the actors had said, you know, you can write the stuff, but you can't say it. So uh, we're, we're working the best we can. All right. The remotely piloting option combined with the design choice to forego thick hull plating for shield generators demonstrated a um, intention to sacrifice the picket ships where they were technically necessary uh, or tactically necessary. Um, the class took uh, the avid or the ovid overlapping shield shape. Uh, of other starships of its type, although it featured a set of small wings for stabilization during atmospheric flight. Um, History-wise, uh, during the uh, Bakura incident and subsequent invasion of Bakura, the Cis Rook field uh, fielded twenty Fushin class picket ships. The Imperial defenses destroyed five of these ships during the preliminary battle, while the rest were destroyed or captured by the Rebel Alliance. Uh, Relief force that arrived to rescue uh, Bakura. Uh, later, or years later, uh, Fushwin class picket ships were used during the second invasion of Bakura. All right. So behind the scenes, the truth of the Bakura source book. List the ship's length at 45 meters, while the essential guide to vehicles and vessels listed at 50 meters. The two sources also differ on the armament of the picket ship. Uh, the former lists the armament of the ships as a pair of bow uh, laser cannons, uh, thin and keel mounted turbo lasers, and six ion cannons, while later, while the later, uh, excuse me, excludes the supercharged turbo laser batteries in description, but not in the blueprints. So, uh, this does come to us from the Truce of uh, Bakura, which is its first appearance in the New Jedi Order uh, Force Heretic 2 Refugee novel. Um, And of course, then we get sources for this for the write-up here in the Wikipedia. From the Truce of Bakura source book, the Essential Guide to Vehicles and Vessels, Complete Star Wars Encyclopedia, in Unknown Regions. Um, so that's what we get from the Wikipedia. All right, now that we look at it in our in our spreadsheet here, um, Sis Roviki picket ship is what we're. Um, the Cis Fruchin class picket ship, and yeah, it is still a mouthful. All right, um, this is at starfighter scale. Uh, our book here it lists it at 45 meters long, has a crew of three, and a gunners of ten. Skeleton can be done with just two people, with ten a plus ten to our uh, difficulty. Um, has three months worth of consumables. It has a times two hyperdrive, although there does not appear to be a backup hyperdrive. Um, there is a nav computer, but it's only limited to four jumps. Has maneuverability of 2D plus one and a space of five. So not the fastest, but not really the slowest ship 
out there. Um, but there again, as a picket ship, it's you know it's not a fighter. It's a picket ship, so it's something to be out on the fringe to try and help defend against fighters. Um, we have a hull of 2D plus 2, so a little bit above our average. Shields of 3D plus 1, so that is actually pretty respectable shields all in all. Uh, our sensor packet, we have, uh, we can passively scan up to 4 kilometers with a 1D. We can actively scan up to 8 kilometers at 1D plus 2. The search out to 13 kilometers with a plus 2D to our scanning and a focus of 400 meters with a 3D. Um, in our weapons systems, we do have listed here six ion cannons. Uh, so each one is going to have one crew member. Fire control of 2D plus 2, so a little bit above average. Um, and with the ion cannons, we, we can either do it one of several ways. We can either have a single ion cannon, which is just going to do 4D, if we have two or three of them fire linked together, it'll be up to a 5D. If we have four to five of them fire linked together, it'll be 6D damage. And if it's all six of them fire linked, it'll be up to 7D damage. So it does propose a fairly good kind of uh, uh, extra ability for what you're trying to take on. If you're just trying to uh, and this is, let's see, well, this is all Starfighter scale. So um, if you're trying to take on multiple Starfighters, you know, you might try each one individually. But if you think you have a bigger Starfighter, you really have to get, you can link them all together, take on the one, and then really disable that one. Um, then we have two laser cannons, and these are fire linked, and I missed this one here. All right, it is front facing has a fire control of 1D, and does 4D in damage. So looking at this, I'm going to guess it's this cannon right above what looks like to be our uh, cockpit here. Uh, let's see. And then last but not least, we have two turbo lasers. So uh, looking at our design, we have one cannon up here, one down here. I'm going to guess those are our turbo lasers. Has a crew of one each, fire control of 1D, and damage of 2D plus 1. That's all we've got on this. Um, not really the most respectable as far as damage goes for these, but, you know, it is something. And they did talk about the fact that quite often these were used more in suicide missions. So, and these are using really droids to do it, not so much in humans. Um, so, we can go from there. Now, it's not from a book I'm, I'm used to reading. I honestly didn't read this book. Um, we do have schematics here. Uh, these are kind of small. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I can't get this down to the next page here. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not. Oh, it doesn't want to let me. All right. Well, I was kind of hoping. Otherwise, like I said, this is kind of small here. So um, it does have 12 decks. Uh, looking at it, we do have targeting in our sensors. We have a turbo laser cannon uh, or control, and we have a turbo lift that goes all the way through the ship in the back here. In our second level, we have uh, what looks to be we have different cells and a. I'm trying to have a hard, I'm having a hard time trying to read this here. Uh, blow this up a little bit so I can see it a little bit. All right, cells. So I'm going to guess that this is for our batteries or whatever. Um, in tech mint room. So whatever that refers to. And our third one, we have our shield generator and our ion cannon. Or some of our ion cannons. We have more cells for probably uh, capturing people. Um, Entechment room here again. Shield generator again. Uh, that's from four or level four, level five. We have our laser cannon in the front. Uh, medical uh, back to tanks here. Uh, droid hole. 
quarters. So there is room for actual people in here as well as droids. So my guess is we're going to have, what, three actual people and then, what, ten droids maybe? Uh, we have sensor uh, quarters, or senior quarters, I'm sorry. We have some more regular quarters. So we actually have the ability to carry more people here, but I'm not seeing. I'm thinking that we could carry up to 13 people here themselves, but... Um, it was seen in our write-up that it's using more droids, so um, I guess depending on how you want to really crew this, uh, we do have a library, a hygiene area, uh, ion cannon controls, uh, level 7 here, we have our bridge, we have our sensors, life support, comms, computers, armor, armor landing, um, or armor, or armor and armory. I'm mixing the landing strut for, for eight here. Um, and then we have a landing strut starting here on level seven. We have escape pods here, uh, escape pods on the other side, as well as basking chamber. Must be something to do with the species that are doing this, and I don't know what the, what the species is really like. We have an escape at hatch as well as an airlock. We have some lockers here, trash ejector, probably on both sides here, uh, landing strut that's on the outside. We have stores, uh, live food cages, more cells, probably for the other cannons, um, landing strut, more cells, shield generator again. And then we have our cargo bay on level 10, landing strut, more shield generator, Level 11, we have ion cannon controls, and this is kind of open space, probably, I'm going to guess, for our um, cargo bay. And in 12, we have an entry ramp and turbo laser control. Um, so I guess that really looks to be about it. And it looks to me like our turbo lasers are going all the way around here. So... That's what gives us that ability to say whether it's on one side or the other or whatever. Uh, they can all fire forward. So it's a different design, an interesting design. Um, not really understanding the species or how it was portrayed in the, in the novel. Uh, I really can't really, or I, I can't really comment too much on... Um, the ship itself, it is an interesting design. I really will say that. Um, just the way this looks, it is very interesting. And it's another one of those uh, ships we don't really get to see uh, in our normal Star Wars Galaxy experience. Um, lots of these ships that we hit are from the Expanded Universe novels, uh, sometimes from the games or whatever. Things that were brought up uh, and rarely seen or rarely even mentioned. So it's it's great to bring these things to light. So as always, I hope you enjoy the series that we bring to you. I enjoy bringing it to you every day. We'll see you in the next video.